Um, so who am I? I'm a Stefan Hölemann, a 24-year-old graphic designer and typographer and type nerd from Zurich in Switzerland. So you're going to hear me talk a lot about typography and type. Work-wise, I'm still a student, but I'm currently taking a break year from the studies until 2020, while also freelancing. This is kind of what I do. Like, um, and to give you an insight into that process or how I got to the part of, or how I work, um, I'm going to show you the process and that what I've learned over the years as a student and while freelancing. So 2011 to 2015, I started out with an apprenticeship as a polygraph. That is a job that I think it mostly only exists in Switzerland. It's kind of like graphic design, but also kind of not. Basically, it entails fixing up graphic designers' files for print and other reproduction. That means you get a lot of technical knowledge and insight into how the printing product production works. But the thing is, you don't really get to do a lot of creative design yourself, and you kind of miss that visual schooling that, uh, that graphic design itself provides you. Also, but something that was really good about that, that I learned the fundamentals of typography and design, especially typography, because we also have to clean up files from graphic designers when, where they did stuff wrong with the typography. Um, I didn't know back then that this would help me so much in the future, but it, I kind of fell in love with the whole typography then, and then decided to do something more with it. Because I kind of didn't like just cleaning up other people's stuff. Um, I got a job at an advertising agency um, as a graphic designer, actually. But that kind of also wasn't so fulfilling. I got a bit um, disillusioned even with the job because I just had always these really strict CIs that I just had to design a flyer for them with the type size and everything already done. So I started to look for new ways to explore myself more creatively. Um, I was on Instagram like scrolling around like I think most of you do. Um, that's when I got noticed the 36 days of type challenge on Instagram. Maybe some of you guys know it. From there, I, I decided to take part. This is the first 36 day of type challenge I took part in. So basically, it just entails you designing one letter of the Latin alphabet each day um, and posting it with the right hashtag on social media. Um, that, really, uh, that really resonated with me because just working on something you decided every day and just putting productive stuff out there, that was really amazing and it really gave me a lot that I was missing at the normal day job. Also, the reception was crazy. I got from, I think, like 80 to 1,000 followers during those, this month. Um, so the whole, the whole experience was really great, so I decided to just keep it up and just design something every day. I kept doing this for over a year and the reception, there's just, I think that was just, I just um, got all the posts from my Instagram from some time ago and just put them in a real <laughs> fast animation. The reception was really crazy. Um, through those daily exercises, I learned a lot by myself. Um, I pushed myself a lot. I tried to do new stuff, try new techniques, new styles, not to fall into a routine. And the great thing was, it started kind of my freelancing career because from there I got a few smaller clients in the beginning and with time the bigger clients, the clients came as well. So the first one was Sony. Um, they approached me to create negative typographic posters that kind of parodied like the positive, motivating, uplifting style you see from Nike, like just do it or something, so it's just give up and so far to go when you're running, <laughs> it's still so far. Um, that was, even though it was a big client, it really felt like, I felt at ease with it because they referenced a lot of posters I've done before and said, yeah, just make that for us with this text. So, but it, it was nice to do it for a client like that, and the bus kind of grew, 
and I got soon approached by more and more clients for, that were also kind of bigger. So the, the first really challenging one was Nike, where I was um, tasked to do concepts for typographic animations, but just the concept. So I kind of did storyboards and the layout for the animation and like how the type moves and where it's po positioned in that frame. And then it got animated by an actual animation studio, Studio Tendril, I don't know, maybe some motion designer, if you know it. Um, they did a really amazing job. <laughs> uh, but what I, what I noticed as I was finished with the project, I kind of didn't want to put anything in my portfolio that I don't know how to do. So I just decided to learn animation. Um, that was perfect when the fir first 36 days of uh, the, the next um, rolled around. So I just did um, animated each letter. And from there, I, then I got approached to, uh, from Adidas to do some animations. And from Tupotic, which is a really amazing type foundry, to animate um, the r launch of their new typeface. And these animations I was actually able to do myself now, instead of just um, doing the storyboards. Um, but next to the freelancing, I still felt like I didn't, I, I'm not good enough, I didn't learn enough, even though the Instagram freelancing thing. So I, try, uh, I decided I will go back to studying uh, visual communication in 2017 and just to learn how to approach um, projects more conceptually and with a bit of a deeper insight in what I actually do and get deeper into typography as well. Um, even though the modules in the studying are set up in a way that you learn to work in many different media, the main focus is still typographic work, in Zurich at least, for the more traditional formats such as posters and editorial designs, like newspapers and books. I learned there many things, uh, how to approach projects from a new, more conceptual standpoint and how to work with reduction and simplicity, other kind of graphic design nerdy things, um, kind of how to break traditional format, formats uh, or subvert them, and other like typographic details that I'm not gonna get into now. Um, but the biggest things I learned throughout the studying so far and throughout my freelance work as well, I have a few kind of, not rules, but kind of philosophies of, or learnings that I've learned. <laughs> and I will try to explain them to you really quickly before showing them with projects. So the first one is do a lot of work. This really fancy name for that. Um, no, it, it sounds really, might sound really cheesy, but one way to get better, or at least for me it was, to create something new and more unique, also on a pro project basis, is to create like a hundred sketches, analyze them on how well they fit the concept that you set for yourself, and then throw like each of those out, besides the best three or so, um, take those, make a hundred sketches based on those again, um, analyze those again, throw the others one out, and so on and so on. If you repeat this, you will find that you find, um, get to something more interesting and newer that you would have just come up with if you just did five sketches and then just chose one of those and work from there. The key point here, though, is reflection. Um, you have to be honest with yourself and or your work partners as well and be able to kill designs that don't work with the concept even though they might look amazing. Um, the second learning, thank you, uh, is to, you'd have to try to actively learn something new with each project. It kind of is similar, it, or it has some similar, um, um, it's a bit similar as the first one in a way it just makes a project take even longer. Um, if you, because you always keep um, tinkering with new stuff and you get, don't know the programs you're working with or you do something new. But if you do the same thing all the time, you might get really good at that. But especially 
or I feel like, especially if you're young or still young in your career, the best thing you can do is just to continuously try out new stuff. Like I, for example, we did with the animations. I just decided, okay, I'm going to learn animation now. Um, I, I have never done it before. And also, a lot of different media has, or at least in graphic design, has a lot of overlap with other media. For example, one of my favorite examples is um, as I did more and more books and editorial designs, that really helped me with web design. Because for me, it's just, you both, uh, in both of those mediums, you just basically guide its users through information by using visual and typographic hierarchies. Maybe in the book, it's more chronological. Depends on the book, of course. And in the website, it's not that chronological, but it's still, you kind of have to guide the user to where, where he has to look and what he has to do next. This also includes another philosophy of mine, kind of in that is um, the multidisciplinarity. Um, just never keep with one medium, or I just get bored if I have to do books for more than a half a year or so. I just need to do new stuff all the time. So that means videos, books, websites, um, sometimes branding and posters, like go back and forth between print and digital and everything. And the third, but uh, the last point, but not the least point, is try to always collaborate. That doesn't necessarily mean that you don't do any projects alone, but even if you do projects alone, I think most of you are already doing that, but just always ask people for their opinions and do it religiously. Because even though sometimes people might say some weird stuff that you can't work with, it's still, they have their own life experience, they have their own unique knowledge coming from that, and they will bring that into your project and look at your project with a new eye before you showing it to the client. And most people are actually more than happy to help you, always. I know it me might seem a bit daunting, especially if you feel like your work is not good enough or you don't want people talking down your work, but in 90% of the time, it worked for me and it helped my project get better. And in the other 10% time, I kind of know, knew which people I shouldn't ask anymore or which people I shouldn't um, spend too much time with anymore. Or, yeah. um, I'll show you these, four, uh, these philosophies in four different projects that I've done to kind of try to show them more practically and maybe get you also a bit of an insight into how I work. Um, the first one is the... ADC Creative Week. Um, it's a yearly event by the Art Directors Club in Switzerland. Uh, it's kind of like Design Yatra, just a lot smaller and not as awesome. <laughs> um, I had the chance to create um, the identity for that this year with four, uh, three friends of mine. And here, two of the philosophies played the uh, biggest role, the iteration, like always reiterating your work, and collaboration, of course. Um, let's get first to the concept. Uh, Creative Week has its unique theme each year, which shapes the design language and what the speakers talk about as well. And this year it was, welcome to the Creative Circus. After really long theoretical discussions on how we could approach this, um, we decided to have the concept of the turning point. This comes from the movement of the artists, the how the arena in a circus is built itself, and from the word circus itself, which is um, et etymologically meaning, um, it means circle or ring, if you go back to Greek. Um, so we did 400 sketches for that over the course of three days, and we did like what I talked about before, we just, each of us sat down, picked one of the, we had more than one concept in the beginning, but we sat down and just picked one of those concepts, um, did like, each person did like 50 sketches in two hours or something, then we set, printed them out, set together. Um, we relentlessly critiqued each other, and then we just had the last three um, sketches that we thought all was the best, and then everyone sat down with those three sketches again, and so on, over the course of three days. So we really had a lot of decision-making to do, but in the end, we still decided to keep it really simple. So we used this concept of the, of the turning point in circles. We just created six circles. Each circle has a different information inside of it, like um, speaker, room, date, and so on. Um, 
and from there we create kind of a daily clock where you have all the information for that day and also, for example, the dates. Um, and then to the right you see it's highlighted the relevant information. And of course, just like in the cir uh, circus arena, the artist is in the middle. Um, the, you can also say the typography kind of, from the rhythm of the typography, it kind of mimics the applause you get. And you see kind of the people in the arena. Then you see a few, a few applications of the final posters. We, we did the main poster with one speaker or like the save the date poster was just one big circle. And if we had many speakers for the whole event, we, we had many circles next to each other with di different colors. And we have three speakers, like three circles. Really, really simple stuff. Uh, we also had to do the signage because the building was huge and you can easily get lost in. So we decided to do that with circles, of course, as well. Some flyers. Um, then here you see the posters again. And of course, we had to do an animation for the event itself. You see here the concept of the turning point works really well in animation as well. It's actually really easy. If you <laughs> just have circles, just make them turn. Um, yeah, let me drink shortly. So the next project is um, one that I did alone. And here I tried to really show off again the reflective design process where you just reiterate um, once and again and push yourself further than you thought in the f then you had the first, uh, then the first idea you had. Um, the client started out with some mood boards. I think some of, most of you kind of know this when the client just gives you mood boards. And he kind of wanted to have it exactly as, or similar to those mood boards at least. Um, actually, I didn't tell which client. Um, it was for Nike China for a new Zoom line. And I had to do four typographic illustrations. So I kind of designed words for them. And the goal was to create a feeling of speed that references car racing, wind, or digital data transmission. Um, the four words were dash, faster, run, and the Chinese sign for speed, which I can't pronounce. Um, and here, once again, I went through tons and tons of different sketches. The, the ones you see here are just a few that I thought were good enough to show. And the the interesting thing was that the clients, they got my sketches and then they just picked like one or two and said, yeah, um, just correct this and that, then it's going to be fine. And I, I wasn't really satisfied with those, th those so I just um, decided to, with, alongside with the corrections, I just sent them like five, ten more sketches for the different words. And that really paid off in the end because um, they, in the end they decided to take stuff that I wasn't in the mood board, and it looked really different from the mood board sometimes. This is the final for each of the words. My favorite one is the faster, because I just love like, how the lightning builds the type, and it's still fairly readable. Um, they also... The finished uh, illustrations were then put in the uh, Nike NBY program, where customers can pick and choose um, different illustrations or patterns um, and create their own shirts with it in the, in the store itself. The store looked really amazing. That was the Nike Innovation Store in China. I, I can't take any credit for that. They did it all by them, but it's just some amazing photos from my portfolio. <laughs> um, then on to the next project. In the, I'll re reference mostly two of my philosophies. It's like collaboration again and embracing new stuff, learning new stuff, new media and processes, as well as here as well, work with limitations. This was done with um, three friends of mine as part of a school competition, actually, which we won um, for the branding of Fogo. What is Fogo? It's a housing project for refugees and students. It kind of aims to... Um, create the dialogue and help the refugees in Switzerland integrate better by putting them together with students in the same area and have them live like as one community. Um, that was a really nice project, we thought. And we 
kind of wanted to reflect this kind of liveliness of the coming together of the community, but at the same time wanted to create a safety and structure for the war traumatized refugees that we have there. Um, so we did this. We decided with, to play with simple forms between um, a circle and square that continuously morph to show the kind of the liveliness, but at the same time it still has a really rigorous system behind it. So it's still kind of a um, structural system that people feel and understand in a way, but they still feel like Fogo, it's always really similar. Um, the visual inspiration here came from building blocks and building sites, from modular approach of building, because most of the places were built with um, the, um, the refugee housing, a lot of it was built with re uh, reclaimed containers, and we kind of wanted to reflect that modular quality as well. Um, then, next to the normal branding and picking of colors and the typeface, we also had to do the signage for the area. Um, here, uh, I did the typeface design for that based on the logo. So, I just took the parts of the logo and um, kind of simplified it so it's not as crazy and a lot more readable. That was more, more, or one of the first typefaces that I created. Um, I also had to make sure it's uh, readable from afar, because it's gonna, it was cut on metal plates and then put on the buildings. Here you see a few implementations of the logo and the typeface. Just also pasted on the, on the building. Um, here we were able to work really closely with architects, which was also a really interesting experience because they kind of said, yeah, you can't put this there, people were not going to see it, and you have to make this smaller and bigger, which was also a really long process you don't see if it, you just see the end product. I also did the website. Um, that was really basic. Uh, it, I kept, decided to kept it really simple to keep the inform, uh, important information first and while still keeping this kind of building site feeling. And then the last project is the Arab Zurich Film Festival. And here, I, this project I did alone again. Um, I worked with most all of the philosophies I talked about. It's an event that showcases contemporary and historically important films from the Arab film scene and it tries to create a dialogue and bring the cultures together. I decided to translate this more or less complex concept in a really simple idea. I wanted to use a fusion of Arabic calligraphy and Latin words to celebrate this culture and show it in a Swiss context. Um, something that was a bit daunting for me was because um, I have no idea about Arabic or Arabic calligraphy. Um, so I didn't want to step on any toes or offend anyone. So I, before even starting the uh, project, I got in touch with around 20 Arabic graphic designers, type designers, and design students um, to talk about this idea and gain collaborative insight on what should I do and what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do, how I should approach this. Um, they told me to use the calligraphy system of Tulut, I hope I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, as it is the most modern one and the most used system today. Also for me or for Swiss pe people as a Western audience, it seems the most Arabic looking. They have some really geometric forms as well that look not so Arabic, so we decided to take this. And for example, one of the things I wasn't allowed to do um, was Latinize the writing system. So, for example, here this letter says um, Ein, still pronunciation. <laughs> um, it means three, uh, I hope, and good. Uh, and it's not allowed to use it as an E, even though for a Latin-speaking person it might look like I can E, but that kind of misinterprets the whole language and doesn't really respect the tradition. So I decided to create sketches with the calligraphy pen, which was a new thing for me, or a hard thing for me as well, because I, I'm left-handed and I suck at calligraphy, 
always um, in all the calligraphy classes we had, um, I always had to turn the paper like 90 degrees to be actually able to do the motions because they didn't give me the right pens. So I hated it, but here I just said, okay, I'm gonna try it and just um, kind of practice calligraphy for a month. You, still, you see um, with my sketches, I still kind of suck. Um, but at least I know how to use um, Illustrator and so on, so I could make it look good while digitizing it. Um, four of the biggest stages of the design process you see here. Um, I did send each of the sketches I did to those designers. They were amazing and helped me out really well, and I couldn't have done it without them. You see the final poster on the right, referencing the blue from the mosques uh, you saw on the on the pictures I had in the inspiration. Um, here is the process from beginning to end with um, the few sketches I still found somewhere in my cardboard and, and so on. So there were a lot more, but um, I only managed to scan those. Um, this process was, again, really long because I always sent, like each little thing I did, sent to 20 people, some of them answered, some of them didn't. Um, I'm really still thankful for those people, and it was something completely new for me to learn. And I'm happy that this got then put into some design exhibitions and so on, even though the client actually didn't take it. Maybe it was too risky for him, I don't know. <laughs> um, so to reflect on the whole thing, um, one thing that isn't written here is the fundamentals, which I got during the apprenticeship and also during the schooling. For me, personally, I feel like um, maybe a bit different than David yesterday. Um, you kind of have to know the fundamentals, especially of typography, before you break them. Or at, at least it's easier. I mean, he managed to do really well without that, but um, I don't know if I could have done that. Um, then don't really go for the easy way in a design process. Always try to be a lot, doing a lot of work and just getting better each time you do something. Always search for the best solution. And of course, never stop, stop talking to people. Sometimes design might be a really lonely job, especially if you do freelancing, so it helps to get out and talk with people and get insight into what other people think about your work. And embrace the unknown, which is really fancy again for um, don't stop pushing yourself, always try to do new stuff Try to do, learn new things with each project you can and just experiment because experiment on yourself as well. This sounds strange, but um, the, I mean, with personal projects and because the clients most of the time won't leave you that kind of space or time. They just will reference something you did before and say, that looks cool, do that for me. Um, now, quick look into my future and then I'm finished. <laughs> Um, I'm currently building a platform that helps young Swiss designers and students make their work more known and sell it as well, because what, one thing I don't like about the Swiss design scene, and I think it's also similar in a lot of other design scenes in the world, is it seems like you're only as good as the people you know, or more or less, um, you don't get any great clients or great products if you, uh, great projects, if you don't know the good designers that know the clients that say, hey, look at this designer, this guy's a good guy, and so on. So I try to kind of combat that in a way, to just promote these young, unknown Swiss designers that do amazing work, better work than a lot of um, established designers, but nobody knows them because they're still young, and then they have to go through this whole internship process where you don't get any money, but and you work just for scraps, just to know more people. Um, I'm also kind of doing a small kind of type foundry with TypeSwiss um, where I build a platform for people to, to kind of promote their typefaces. They don't have to license it to TypeSwiss. And with that, I'm also doing my own type design. I'm releasing two typefaces. The first two commercial ones I've done soon. One of those I've used for this presentation. Some of the type designers here might have seen some of the mistakes that are still in there. Um, yes, and then I also want to launch my own studio or launch it with a few collaborators, a few friends of mine, to take on bigger projects. And that's it. Thank you very much. If you, yeah.